And next up, speaking of legacy, uh, here's someone who's creating a great legacy in data and life sciences and patient care, Genentech, Alice Chung. Hi, Alice. Hi, Stan. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you and we can even see you, which is really a good combination when you're doing things like this. So thanks for joining today. Thank you. Great, great, great. Yeah, if you could just start off with giving everybody like a one minute overview of your background, that'd be fantastic. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Alice Chong, and I'm currently based in San Francisco Bay Area. I am a member of Genentech's business operations team in the areas of strategic analytics and intelligence. I lead science clinical analytics efforts and collaborate with cross-functional stakeholders, including medical and field medical teams to design and implement sustainable business strategies and programs using analytics for oncology, immunology, ophthalmology, neuroscience, and all of our pipeline molecules. So my background is diverse, where I have extensive experience in long-term strategy formulation, scenario planning, program design, and embed analytics use. I'm also part of Global Innovation Management Institute's member advocating the practice of innovations and mentoring others who are interested in this discipline. I'm glad to be here partnering with HitLab's Digital Summit effort. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you for joining us. And, and tell us a little bit, you have such an interesting role in Genentech. We really are fascinated by the work that you're doing. Tell us a little bit about how this role intersects with the, the just the massive trends that we're seeing across the ecosystem with wearables and AI and like. Sure. Uh, my role in analytics oftentimes needs to identify and solve business problems. So from there is to utilize relevant data sets to find answers for our medical teams. So the intersections with the latest advancements in new technology helps to improve not just the efficiencies to perform analysis, uh, but to also leverage the data sets and to triangulate with a lot of different data sources and to test hypotheses because the efficiencies are there, you can do a bit more. Our feedback as analysts are also helping the machine and the new technologies to improve to solve business uh, problems in real world. So that's really how our roles continue to evolve and becoming more sophisticated with advancements in new technology. That's fantastic. And that, there's no hotter space right now where we're seeing so much adoption of digital technology in those areas. Uh, it just, it seems like almost everyone these days is wearing some kind of wearable, whether it's a ring or a watch or whatever it might be. Uh, and literally I was giving a talk at the UN yesterday and it, it seemed like half the room of the people that I was talking to about a hundred folks or so were wearing some kind of wearable. And these were folks, not just from the U S but from all over the world. So obviously you're getting a lot more data to do a lot more analytics on, right? Yes. A lot more data also means a lot more noise too. <laughs> It goes yeah, both right. ways, <laughs> yes. So let's let's dig into that because I really wanted to ask you about that in this session as well. But talk to us about that. How is the team contributing, and, and your team that is how are they contributing to this kind of effort of taking all of this data, integrating all these technologies into the medical and scientific strategies that Genentech is developing? Well, um, they're all relating. Uh, to utilizing technology's capabilities to triangulate potential scientific needs. The first example, you know, we have leveraged uh, new technology to assess health equity trends related to women's health and the potential prevalence in certain disease states. So the goal here is to understand, are there any alignment with existing and or new kind of materials that we could discover more. And so that particular findings were able to integrate that into more discovery and analytical efforts. So that's part one. And then the other example is to surface the correlations of more than 10 different data sources to see what kind of trends are showing up in certain specific disease uh, or therapeutic areas. So the findings here is that um, a lot of different data sets coming together, they all have their different biases and caveats. So how do you bring the right level of contextual elements to really understand what's going on and be able to um, identify the right components to incorporate it into the medical and scientific strategy? So both of these efforts are um, examples where we have contributed to pooling information, more data sets, leveraging advanced technologies to understand more of the, the the disease needs better. So I would say this is how we as analytics teams can help continue to contribute. 
And that's enormous because as those analytics teams and, and teams across life sciences are contributing to strategy, clearly the strategy team is going to be more excited about and, and the, the executive leadership team at life sciences, health plans, certainly provide organizations and employers are going to be more excited about getting more data because it's more actionable. And we've got about two minutes left. And I, I just want to make sure we get this question in too, because it's one I've really been thinking about with, with what you guys are doing. Talk to our audience, uh, again, very diverse group of startups and digital health executives, life science provider pair and employer executives about the challenges that you're seeing that are associated with integrating this kind of real-time data, maybe even you know asynchronous data into your analytics framework. I would say um, the beauty of the data is that you sometimes don't have to refresh the downsides. You can have a lot of noises and you can also not having enough of the solid data curation steps in order to filter out the noises, the impurities and close the, the loop. So that will continue to recommend having human in the loop <laughs> along the way uh, from design, from data curations, from interpretations, from use is what you will need to make sure you build in in the process, in the operations and the utilizations and feedback as well. Because it's just like any other ingredients as an example for for as an analogy is it's cooking. If you know how your materials is sourced, raw ingredients, how it's preparing like, and you can trust it. So I think that will be the, the continuous uh, component to think about as we leverage more advanced technologies. Okay, this has been fantastic, Alice. And again, thank you very much for joining us today and really appreciate your time. <clears throat> and looking forward to having you back on here and having you on a convene for the Breakthrough Alliance uh, knowledge sharing sessions that we do as well. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.